Welcome to the next coding challenge. And in this one, we will build this very simple currency conversion tool. So here we can input some amount of money that we want to convert from one currency to another. So let's say, for example, we want to convert 100 euro, so the input currency, to the output currency, which is US dollars right now. And so you see that the converted value is $107.70. And this conversion here is actually done by an API, which contains real-time currency conversion data. And so by the time you're watching this, the value here will most likely look different. And of course, we can also change the currencies. So let's say we want to convert from US dollar to Euro, so the other way around, and then 100 Euros, or actually $100, is just 93 Euros. All right, so this is the task for this lecture. And as always, uh, we are starting from some very simple starter file. So here I already have basically the HTML skeleton laid out for you here in the app component. And so your task now is to first uh, transform these elements here into controlled input elements. So just like we have done before. And then after that, I want you to use an effect like we did in this section in order to actually do an API call to this URL here, which will then do the actual conversion. So here again is the URL of the API that we're going to use. So your fetch request will be made to this URL right here. And then you can replace the amount, the from currency and the to currency. And if you want to get more information about this API, you can just go to this link right here. All right. And so as you see here in the demo, the conversion is made each time that one of these three fields here updates. So if I delete something here, then immediately the value is updated here with a new value coming from the API. And the same if we change here to some other currency. So this is going to be a bit similar to what we did throughout this section. And so take a few minutes now and I see you back here once you are finished so that you can then check out if your solution is correct and what you could have done maybe differently. Okay, so I hope that you had a great time with building this calculator and that you had some success with it. So if your calculator works, then you are already done with this video here. But in any case, I will of course now implement my own solution here. And I will just start by making these three elements here controlled elements. So let's create some pieces of state. So amount and set amount. And of course, you could have called them any other thing. So that's not really important. And let's actually start with one here. So that's const. And then here, let's do the from currency and set from currency and here the default is going to be euro and then let's do the same for the other currency so to currency and set to currency and so here let's use by default us dollar and now we just need to wire all that up here with these elements so the value should be the amount and then on change we do set amount is equal to e dot target dot value but we should not forget to actually convert this to a number because otherwise we get a string and that we cannot really convert well probably we could actually because we will then plug it here into a string later but yeah, it's nicer to have it all in the correct data format here. But anyway, this now is the from currency. And then on change will be 
set from currency again e dot target dot value okay and now i will just copy the same thing here to the other select element so to currency and set to currency and here we are missing this closing brackets and yeah that's it uh, for the controlled elements and so let's now get to work on the effect so use effect and then passing in our effect function as always and then let's initially run this on component mount so we will do an http request to this url right here and therefore we will need a fetch function which returns a promise and therefore we now need an async function and since the effect function itself cannot be async let's create another one in here so async function and calling it simply convert and then later we will simply call that function in here okay and now let's do the actual conversion itself so we will do our fetch request to this url right here so let's grab that and then of course we need to replace all these values here in this template literal so amount here we have the from currency and then finally we have also the to currency and so this will remember return a promise and so let's await that promise and store it in a variable called response and then from there let's also await the uh, data itself so we'll await by converting the response to json and then let's start by simply logging that to the console so checking out the data so that we know which format it has and immediately we see down here that we get a result and so that means that our effect is already working with the default data that we gave it here so here then we can see that inside the rates object we have the usd property which is our two currency and so that's the converted value right here so let's try to read that value so that's inside data dot rates and now we need to dynamically read the property from there so in this case that's usd but of course we cannot hard code that because if our two currency would be euros then here we would have euros and so we can simply read the property by doing it like this and so there is our number and so instead of logging it to the console we now want to have it appear on the screen right here so as always what we need is a new piece of state and set converted and so just like before as soon as the data arrives we will update the state which will then update our user interface and show us the converted value here let's start with nothing and yeah simply replacing this console.log with set converted give it a save and nothing happened but it should happen as we reload the page well actually not and well of course the reason is that down here we still hard-coded the output so here now we want to read converted and then we can even write the two currency here as well so we have 1.0717 us dollars great so that's working just fine but what if we change something here so now i update this to 100 but you see that nothing is happening and if you remember everything we just learned throughout this section this is going to make total sense to you because as we type a new number here 
we will update the state that is inside the app component. And therefore, we will re-render this component. However, our effect right now only runs on the initial render. So we don't have anything here in our dependency array. And so React has no way of knowing that it should also rerun this effect right now. And so let's change that. So let's basically give our dependency array all the values that our effect in fact depends on. And so those are amount, the from currency and the to currency. So each time one of these three changes, then our effect here should basically synchronize with any of those. So amount from currency and to currency. And again, here I like to use the analogy that this dependency array is essentially like listening for one of these three variables to change. And then each time that happens, it will just re-execute our effect again. And so this means that really our effect is now synchronized to these three variables. Great. And so as we type here, you see that the value actually updates. Now you do see maybe that it takes some time for the update to happen. Let's maybe click here and notice that the change wasn't immediate. And if you have a slower internet connection, then maybe for you, it will take even longer. And so that's of course, because our application needs to make this API call and only after that, the state is updated. So only then we get our result, which we can display here. So to tell the user about that, we again need our loading state. So let's do that. And notice how here we are just ignoring errors. So if something goes wrong, then we are not accounting for that situation right here. But this is just a challenge to make the effect uh, work. So set is loading to true. And of course, first I need to create this new piece of state. So is loading and set is loading. And we start with false. And then before the fetch happens, we set it to true. And once we are done, we set it to false again. So set is loading back to false. But now where do we actually use this is loading state? So we could, of course, again, display some loader here. So something like a text displaying loading. But instead, what I want to do here is to basically disable these three fields. And so that then has the purpose of showing the user that something is happening. And also, besides that, it then prevents the user from typing in anything else and creating multiple HTTP requests at the same time. So let's do that. And this we haven't done before, actually, but in all of these input elements, we can specify the disabled prop, which again is standard HTML. And so disabled basically takes a true or false. So if we set it just to true here, then you see that it gets like grayed out and then we cannot do anything with it. Now, of course, we don't want it to always be true, but instead we want it to be disabled when is loading is true. Okay. And we will do this many other times throughout the course. So this is a pretty common thing to do actually. Okay. And this one as well. And now watch what happens when I click. So very shortly, these three got disabled, which shows the user that indeed something is happening so that the data is being loaded in the background. Now there's just one final thing that I want to do, which is what happens when these two are the same. And in fact, we even get an error in this situation because the API is not made for the case that we are converting from one currency to the same one. So let's fix that and that's not too hard. So before we do any of this, we can check if the from currency is the same as the to currency. And so in that case, 
then we basically do not want to run the convert function. So let's do that down here. So outside of this function and before even calling it. So we just say if from cur is equal to the two currency, then return and also set the converted value to the amount, which is simply because the converted value will be the same as the amount if the currency is the same, right? So let's try that here. I'm just reloading to getting rid of those errors. And then let's see. And there we go. So now one euro is one euro and we didn't even have to call the API uh, for this conversion because it is in fact not really a conversion. Okay, and that's it, I think. Now, remember that we ignored errors here, so we didn't handle them at all, but you should never do that in the real world. So that's just something that I wanted to mention here. But since this is just a learning exercise, that's no big deal. But anyway, with this, we finish yet another section. So congratulations on the great progress that you have been making up until this point. And now, after you hopefully review everything we just learned in this section, I see you right in the next one, where we will dive even deeper into the topic of React hooks.